The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And you're talking about higher prices across the board, folks. S&Ps right now up nine tenths percent, we'll call it up 38 points, trading at 44.94. Pretty remarkable when you look where we were on Sunday evening. You're talking about now about 150 S&P points, just shy of that number, 140 to be exact, from the bottom that we saw Sunday evening from where we are right now. NASDAQ 100. We're up 167 points. That's 1.2%. Not quite getting back all the losses from yesterday, man, but you talk about some volatility. Just in the last week, folks, backing it up from last Thursday, we were sitting at 14,300. We trade down almost 600 points. We trade up that 600 points to get it all back. And then basically within the last 24 hours, you've traded down about 350 points. That's 2% down. And we are now up about more than 1%. Talk about volatility. We'll see where the market goes in 23 minutes on the opening bell. Dow, well above 35,000 now. The Dow in the last week, you're talking about 15, excuse me, 1,300 points to the upside. And you're talking about a Russell right now that's positive by 8 tenths percent. Bitcoin trading up $1,500 at 42.750. We have the gold, uh, excuse me, oil contract, 103.60. Doesn't look like the, the as dramatic as moves as the doesn't look as dramatic as they are, but you traded down $4 yesterday from 104, just below 100. You got a print of 99.88. Was that the low? I think it was. 99.88. And just like that, we make it back to 104 early this morning. And look at that pop that we just got at 9 in the morning, folks. That's the bar that started 8 minutes and 22 seconds ago. And you're talking about a bar. We're up about a buck fifty from where we were. Volatility, man, in spades. Gold contract. Down five dollars at 1950. We were at 1938 this morning, and we jumped to notes and bonds. You got the 10 year right now, negative by eight ticks. We're talking about a 10 year yield 2.863 percent, uh, a bit off of the lows that we had yesterday, but just chopping around at about 119 and change. Uh, yes, 119 and change on the 10 year, and we jumped to the VIX. Volatility back under 20, 1997 for the volatility index. All right, we got a lot to cover this morning. Where do we kick things off? Let's do it with weekly jobless claims. Quite a low number yet again, 184,000, just above expectations. Market was looking for 182. Nonetheless, comes in right at the estimate. And the only thing I would say about it is that the estimate's almost like the lowest number that you could imagine, as in its record breaking territory at 182,000 jobs on a weekly basis in a healthy economy 250 maybe 275 very tight economy right now coming in right at expectation of 182 uh not a hugely important factor if that's even proper english is it uh but nonetheless it comes in right near that number all right let's jump around to some of the companies with earnings let's go to the airline stocks man they are on fire american forecast second quarter profit soaring travel demand they are up i think 11 percent last checked aal is their symbol you're trading up more than two dollars right now so that's more than a 10 percent pop they got a lift last night who was it last night was it united i think it was united announces their earnings last night they crush it as well uh, they're up to 50.70 from 46.50. So you had American with two pops. They got the pop on United, and then they get another pop on their own earnings last night, up to 21.50. Back to the headline. March was the first month since the pandemic began. Its revenue surpassed 2019 levels. Remarkable when you think about travel demand. I've been hearing numbers down about 25%, somewhere in that. It expects to fly as much as 94% of its 2019 schedule. They're taking in more revenue. They're only flying 94% of the schedule. Price is obviously up. 280 a gallon for fuel in the first quarter, up 65% from last year. I think we all wish we were paying 280 a gallon uh, for fuel right now when fuel's at about four bucks. But nonetheless, Strong numbers for those airlines, man. They are all trading higher right now. They're basically coming in at almost 100% of what they were traveling in 2019. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Okay, so more than the competitors, Delta and United. So this is American, Delta and United, a little bit more conservative about restoring capacity through the pandemic. Uh, we'll pull up some of the competitors in a moment. They come in pretty close to the expectations, but it was all about what they're going to be doing in the current forecast. Net loss of $1.6 in the first quarter, more than double. Uh, they come in at almost $9 billion in sales, down 16% compared with the same time in 2019 but not in march remember that was the key there january and february were a different world folks i got COVID with my family in february um that was when omicron was raging right january february especially months probably not kind to them but as we came out of that got over that hump that's when things really started to pick up in march we're february 20 uh, excuse me Mar april 21st right now i imagine that trend is going to continue for some time to say the least and yeah, let's jump around to some of these travel stocks because this is an area, folks, they have been beaten down, okay? I mean, you take a look at where some of these stocks have been going back on a three-year weekly. There's your drop off on COVID. American came into COVID at about 30 bucks. You drop to $8 and change, you make it all the way up to $26 and change, okay? We're trading at 21 right now. They're dealing with the headwind of higher prices for gas. That's gonna be something they're dealing with for some time to say the least right now. But nonetheless, you see the possibility with demand just through the roof right now. Planes are packed, ticket prices going up, and you're sitting at $21. Yeah, you were as low recently, March 7th of 12 bucks. So you're catching, you know, almost a double bid. But in context of where the stock has been and all the stocks, I mean, look at this one, though. They were already in trouble coming into COVID. Uh, 60 bucks almost back in 2015 for American. Let's take a look at Delta Airlines. They chop around between about 50 and 60. They come into COVID at 60. Delta's gonna open today at about 44. You jump over to United shares. You're trading at $50 on United right now. You came into COVID at about 90, even domestically. Now JetBlue's been dealing with some woes, man. But even the domestic carriers getting a lift right now, 1305 to 1370. Now the market is up about a percent right now as well. So it's not just the airlines. You're gonna have JetBlue open up about 70 cents to the upside right now. It's a nice pop, but check out this chart, man. You're right back to the 618 of JetBlue at about 1250, and that's of the entire run of COVID from six bucks back to basically where you started, and you give up 618 of that entire move. Uh, JetBlue, here's what I will say, just booked a flight for my mom. She's sitting back from Tampa to Boston for a week, 10 days or so. Uh, not that bad options. I'll be she's flying Thursday night uh, to Boston. I think that leg of the flight was $200 uh, and then flying back Saturday night a week following the Saturday night flight $100 on JetBlue going from Boston back to Tampa. Uh, not a lot of people flying Saturday night so that was the affordable one there. Uh, Could have done it Sunday night though as well for about $130 each on, on that leg of the trip. Not bad, right? $330, bucks. you add the fees, it's close to $400. Uh, JetBlue has their basic fare that does not even include a carry-on now, doesn't include you selecting a seat. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Still getting over that little cough. Um, but you upgrade $30 per a leg of the flight, so about $400 for the flight. But not that bad when you think about all the stories of demand, packed flights. Here's what I will say about JetBlue, though, to finish the conversation. Many horror stories of JetBlue not being able to have the staff having to cancel flight, cancellations, delays. So maybe that's part of the reason why. We'll find out. That's definitely part of the reason why they have a slide going on. Consumer sentiment, not on the bright side of JetBlue. And they've always been my favorite, uh, especially because of... Uh, the great connection they have, Boston to Tampa, in those flights, uh, those planes. They were one of the first ones that had those nice TVs. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be looking at Boeing, some other stocks when we get back. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up 39 points right now. You're trading at 44.94, NASDAQ 100 up 163. I'm Aaron Kevin Hinks on vacation for the next couple of days. Well-deserved. He'll be back in the saddle on Monday. We'll be talking to him on Tuesday, uh, jumping back into the markets right now. I said we're going to take a look at Boeing. So all the airlines accelerating higher. It seems like planes are going to be in demand for some time. Boeing, maybe that's your play that you escape some of the costs of oil coming into things. The only thing I'll say is we are still within a downtrend channel, folks. Uh, the one thing is you've got plenty of room to the upside in this channel if you're just playing a trade right now. I would be skeptical or at least be cautious. Cautious is a better word if you're in this and you're trading it and you bump up against this upper boundary line. Uh, look how many times you've hit the top portion and made a run back to the bottom portion of that line consistently. Okay, I imagine you'll break out of it at some point, folks. And... It would seem like if all the airlines are packed to the hilt, the one thing that I want to add to that, and I'm kind of walking you through the gymnastics I'm doing on a fundamental basis, but we are in a period of time, I imagine, folks, one year, two year, three year, five year, people want to travel and get out, okay? Uh, planes have not, they just went over, right? That some of the airlines have not opened back up as many routes yet compared to uh who are we talking about united i believe was the company we were, no american excuse me was the company we we're talking about and they specifically say that delta and united united have been more conservative about restoring capacity so planes not in there just yet but man i'm telling you they're at 94 percent of the 2019 schedule business travel is down i think 25 percent whatever it's down it is down so retail travel up to make up for that compensation and I don't see business travel going down from here at all. If anything, I see at least the possibility that we want to get back out and go to a show, right? Haven't been to a money show or a Traders Expo in a while because really the value at those shows diminished greatly as so much information was available online and the community was available online for traders. Uh, but guess what? I want to get back out, man. I want to go to a couple trade shows. I want to see people. Maybe that picks back up. Maybe Boeing's to play. Uh, but keep your eye on this downtrend channel. Now, that's a weekly. We put it back on a daily for Boeing. Let's put it back on a daily five years to get the full channel line we're talking about. That begins in March of 2021, folks. So you're talking about fifth, excuse me, 13 months. Very well-defined channel line. But guess what? We're going to open today about 187. That's going to be right back to the excuse me, the top of the bar, excuse me, from a couple of days ago. Um, and this is the one I'm looking at. You know, nice bounce over the bottom of the channel. Uh, again, I would just be cautious as it gets to the top there. But the top, you're talking about 
I mean, what is that? That's 210. You're talking about even at 187, $23. It's what, 13, 14% from where we are right now, just to challenge the top of that portion. All right, what else are we talking about? Let's jump through the line of what we have going on. How about HBO here? We'll, we'll stay with the streamers since uh, Netflix disappointed so greatly. HBO, quite a number. Caught me off guard a little bit in terms of how much they have grown, especially with the premium price that HBO was able to collect. 77 million total subscribers as Netflix reports a decline. So 76.8 million at the end of the first quarter. Now what's interesting here is that this is AT&T reporting, the former parent company of HBO and HBO Max. The next time that you get a report for these numbers, they are now a part of Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, WBD is their symbol. So this earnings having to do with AT&T, but they do release the numbers having to do with HBO, which is now WBD. Tough chart for AT&T. That is what I'll say about that stock, okay, real quickly. But to see the action on their earnings, they spike a little bit higher. They're coming out with more than just HBO numbers, but that's the article we were talking about. And then we jump over to Warner Brothers Discovery. WBD, also a little bit of a lift, but the market's up. And Warner Brothers Discovery is basically flat this morning. And if you take a look at this chart, uh, we're going to back it up even further. That is a tough one, folks. Uh, I believe that's the Bill Wang saga that sent this thing um, through the roof. You're trading at 23. Could make the case that maybe you're chopping around to the lowest that we had at the end of 2021, that low 21.66. We're trading at 23 right now, but nothing to stop this stock from going back down to $20, folks. I will say, fundamentally, though, HBO, uh, I've been watching Succession myself right now, enjoy a lot of the programs that they have out there. And that is a lot of subscribers at a premium price for HBO. But man, just like we saw with Netflix, it is a tough one, folks. And let's talk about Disney. Uh, we do have some Disney in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, folks. I was getting some questions from friends and from uh, people in the den, subscribers. It's quite a pullback. The one reason I love Disney so much, folks, is that you gain the streaming with the stability of the parks and the movie theater business. Now that has been anything but stable during the last two years during COVID. But we were just in Orlando for my birthday a month ago, H, uh, HBO, Disney sold out, couldn't even go there. Uh, now it's a bummer, the whole saga going on with Florida and Disney, and I'm probably gonna touch on that a little bit later. Um, very unfortunate what's going on, stripping Disney of their own uh, district, very short-sighted. Uh, it's been there for 50 years. They take phenomenal care of their grounds, the jobs that they employ in the state. And our governor is very upset at them for reasons. And they're willing to hurt that business for political reasons. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, but nonetheless, thankfully, we don't live in Russia or China where the politicians can't completely destroy corporations just because they don't like them. Uh, Disney... 124, those parks, all of that stuff going on, folks, that's not going to stop for any time soon. I think I just saw that like three or four days ago, Disney, for the first time, hugs are back. Hugs are back at Disney. Kids couldn't even walk up and hug Mickey Mouse. We are going to be in an extended period of time, folks, that people want to get back out, um, experience life, experience travel, go to Disney. Um, so what ended up happening was, right, I was there for my birthday. We couldn't make it to Disney. Uh Little Tommy the Fourth, he is now approaching, coming up on 15 months. He's going to be, uh, we're going to bring him. We got a Disney trip we got to make, right? Think about the people that uh, we also have a five year old in the house. He's never been to Disney either because just as he was getting to that point that he was ready to go to Disney, maybe experience it, right? He's two, he's two and a half. He's coming up on three years old. Um, he's just able to really experience it, remember it. No, COVID hit, so you can't go. You got two to three years of children in that age group. It, among many others, where there's just a backlog. And that exists on Disney, that exists on many facets of life, okay? Many facets of life. Um, and that's a trend, folks. It's gonna take a year, two years, three years to sort through when you think about Disney was sold out. So what did I have to do? I have to push back my visit. I'm not the only one pushing back visits when literally the Magic Kingdom was sold out. I think when I looked it up, the only park that was available was Epcot. Listen, that's a great park. I'm sure I'd love to make it there with the kids, uh, but wasn't willing to do it for a whole day just to go to Epcot when really I wanted to go to Magic Kingdom, just like everybody else, right? 
movies also coming back. I think I just saw the trailer for Thor coming out this summer. This summer's probably going to be a big blockbuster summer, folks, all right? There's always going to be the possibility that COVID exists, a new variant exists, but I imagine the demand is there, and I think it's going to carry for some time. And streaming is a difficult game, and the best part about Disney, the reason why they accelerated on their last earnings, folks, to put up the daily, the reason why you got this pop here in February was Parks. Parks, parks, parks. Now, the market gave it back up. Disney's been punished. Now they're getting punished for Netflix's sins. Okay? That parks business, that's not going down anytime soon. They're making more money per user. I mean, I think about the costs. And that's really why. I wasn't just going to take a second-rate Epcot experience and spend, what, God knows, right? A family of five, six, the grandparents, too. Drop a couple grand easy in a day when you talk about tickets, food, experiences, all that stuff. Um, average revenue per user going up. We'll be right back for the opening bell, folks. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets open. We get the S&P right now. We're right near that 4,500 mark. We're trading up 42 points. That's almost 1% in the positive at 4,497. NASDAQ 100, you're up 1.2%, 14,170. You get the Dow right now. 
up 291 points. That's eight tenths percent. Look at that charge higher in the Dow. The Dow now over the March 29th high that we had, and the Russell up more than a percent, 1.1 percent in the positive right now. 2059. Uh, we jump back to Netflix shares. Netflix down another percent. The pain has not ended yet. We're 224.88. You made a low at 212 yesterday, down from 700 dollars in November. Remarkable. We jump back to Disney. Disney positive eight percent with the market today. So going to take a moment and go over the. Disney saga that's going on in Florida. It's now main front, um, main stage as Disney, uh, their district, I mean, voter, voter state officials passing yesterday to try and strip that. I think it goes a year out. Uh, it's important to become aware of what's going on, folks, especially when it starts affecting stocks. We have Disney in my newsletter. Uh, I know it's a very political topic, heated topic. So I'm just going to do my best to explain it. It's always good to be informed, folks. All right. So to take a look at the actual bill that's being passed and what's causing uh, the most press on both sides, the part of it in particular, and this is the actual text of the bill, it is Bill 1557. Okay. Uh, and the text that gets the most attention here, probably rightfully so, is classroom instructions by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten or grade three, which gets most of the press, which most people agree with, which I completely understand and I probably agree with. Okay. But the part that gets no attention in my opinion, is or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. It's a really gray line. What is age appropriate as you go through high school when it talks about sexual orientation and gender identity? OK, the bummer of this is, is that if you have a teacher that is just gay in Florida, folks, OK, and a student asks them about their weekend or their life outside of class, uh, you could make the case by what this says here that it is not age appropriate for that teacher to have a conversation just about being gay um, about their home life by explaining that even in high school, because what is age appropriate, okay? So you're getting a lot of attention on K through three discussing sexual orientation and gender identity, completely understandable. Uh, I believe it was written that way to give the people that wrote this bill, DeSantis is cheerleading it, okay, um, and Republicans, to give them the talking point that it's kindergarten through third grade. But what you have to understand is that this talks about much more than that. And that is some of the pushback in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. I'm sure a lot of parents out there feel that they don't want their children, and unfortunately so in my opinion, okay, um, even discussing anything to do with that even in high school. But what that does, folks, is it, is it eliminates people from literally existing as gay as a teacher an administrator and being able to talk about their personal life in any capacity entirely through high school. So that just does not apply to third grade. Disney, with the amount of employees they have in Florida, and I got to look that one up as well, um, very understandable that they may have many employees directly affected by this by being either gay, transgender, whatever it may be themselves or knowing somebody or having kids in school in that experience, okay? So that is the actual underlying of what is in the actual bill, okay? Um, so you fast forward to what they did yesterday. Um, they basically end the special districts in Florida before 1968. One, one amusing tidbit is that that does not apply to special districts since 1968, one of the special districts, many of the special districts, um, the villages in Florida, a huge Republican stronghold, okay? So they're not going to affect them. They're coming back to Disney. Disney's had this for 50 years. Um, it's a rush without thought, folks, and it's hurting the company that has created so many jobs. I mean, you think about what Central Florida was before Disney, okay? And simply for the CEO saying that this may come out and hurt their company, their employees, in the state of Florida that they operate in. Um, it's very vindictive to have the politicians putting politics ahead of that company, especially when, folks, it is something that I do not agree with either. It is a very unfortunate bill. Um, it is very, in one essence, you could say it's poorly written. In another essence, you could say it's brilliantly written, depending on what you want to achieve. By leaving the line so gray 
and general, you allow any interpretation whatsoever, which obviously could be interpreted um, in a hateful manner when it comes to anybody talking about what is age appropriate in their opinion to discuss sexual orientation in high school at all. It's unfortunate what's going on. Now you bring to just how unfortunate it is that they're doing business. So you have DeSantis, this, munis this district, okay, that they have, folks, and it's, uh, what is it, the Reed? I got to get it right. Um, it has a, at least a billion, the Reedy Creek Improvement District has a billion dollars. I heard two billion out there. At least this is a Bloomberg article of municipal bonds currently outstanding. Okay. As a bondholder, you have people that have these bonds. And Republicans just passed in Florida that they're going to do away this district. There's a billion dollars of bonds. How that gets dealt with, they don't even know. That is not how government gets run, folks. It is very unfortunate, okay? Um, I'm not a fan of DeSantis. You, you don't have to fall on one side of the aisle or the other. Uh, I love how open Florida is, all this stuff, okay? Um, don't agree with much of what DeSantis does beyond that, okay? I think I'm fortunate to live in Florida. I love the place. This is a really unfortunate part about what is going on in the state right now in Florida, where you have bills being passed like this, and then you have the government being so vindictive that they're willing to tear down businesses, okay, and throw a billion dollars into municipal debt into array just to get their way. Now, under current Florida statutes, the debts and assets of a special district that is dissolved are passed to the municipal government that takes over. <sighs> so what's going to happen here? Okay. I don't know. And DeSantis is an elected official, and I bet he's going to somehow make sure that this doesn't get passed over to any type of his constituents, but it just speaks to how poorly thought this thought out this is, that they have a billion dollars of municipal debt, and they just passed that they're going to dissolve special districts before 1968 over the next year. There's some date on it, okay? Um, and the bottom line is, is that this could literally go to either um, some of the small population areas, small cities like Bay Lake or Lake Buena Vista, or it could go to the counties nearby, um, which would be thousands of dollars per a citizen of those counties if they just took on a billion dollars of debt, which really was a municipality that was governed by Disney. This is not what's supposed to be happening, folks. It's a sad affair going on across the board. Um, and you should become informed of what, about what's happening. Now, the hypocrisy that goes along with it, okay, is that, number one, you have them smashing Twitter out there as well, okay? We're going to be looking at ways the state of Florida can potentially um, divest Twitter from their pension, okay? And at the same time, folks, you got articles getting rid out. We got $300 million in Russia, okay, as part of the pension plan, and they won't even divest that, okay? It's a shame what's going on, and I'm going to pull up one of the final quotes as we wrap it up. I'll find it over the break. Uh, but it's important to be informed because K through 3 is very understandable, folks. Um, there's a lot of reasonable voices, okay? It is not reasonable to say you can't talk about being gay anytime during high school if people don't feel like that's appropriate. That's just hateful, folks. We'll leave it at that. We'll come back. We'll talk some stocks. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 45 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up 253. Man, that NASDAQ 100. You're talking about a range of 350 points. You're talking about a range of like 2% right now in a 24-hour period in both directions. You jump over to Tesla. You talk about a pop man, Elon Musk. He's having himself quite a month, quite a couple months. Tesla, record earnings up 11%. There are more than a billion shares outstanding in Tesla right now, you're up $110. You're up more than $110 billion in market cap today alone. That $50 billion in market cap that Netflix lost yesterday, Tesla will take double that right there. There you go. Um, yeah, that talk about Disney, it got all the, all right, all, all the, the, the favorites in the YouTube chat. Let's calm down, please, gentlemen. Have some class. Let's go. All right, Tesla, up to 1085 man. Quite the move. If we jump around to what else is going on on the market, let's jump to some of the headlines I got pulled up here. Uh, I got a couple pulled up. Yeah, how about we'll stay we'll stay with Mr. Elon Musk. Uh, has does he have enough companies? The boring company, and in any other universe, folks, this would be uh, one of. I mean, it'd be a career achievement. You start a $6 billion company, you raise $675 million. Uh, that's the boring company as they're trying to build some tunnels to solve traffic. Uh, yet another valuation add to uh, Elon's net worth. Pretty remarkable when you look at it. Okay, let's jump around to some of the other stocks and see how they're opening on the airlines. We jump over to Delta this morning. Look at that. They catch a pop even at the open up 4.4%. Let's jump over to Boeing shares. Boeing up 2.6% right now. We jump to United with their strong earnings. Whew, up 11.7% for United, man. Quite a pop. Uh, domestically, JetBlue shares, 7.5. Look at these airlines. This might be it, folks, in terms of the transition. Cruise ships, Carnival. Yeah, up 4.4% right now. NCLH Norwegian up 4% as well. Uh, Airbnb up 3% to 170. We pull back. Let's take a look at Airbnb on a daily basis. We were in a downtrend going back. You break out of that really as you reach the low on March 8th. You accelerate. Yeah, to 170. Um, I mean, this has some areas that's going to face some potential resistance here, even if you catch a bid up to 177 or so where it's been. Uh, but that would be a strong stock as well going forward. You jump over to Marriott. They were having a run as well. Look at that. Marriott up 2.2%. You were just trading April 11th at 162. And Marriott's trading at 194 right now. Let's jump out to commodities. Crude. You're trading up a buck 44 back to a short-term time frame, 15 minute, 103.62. You jump over to gold. Gold down $10 so far this morning. 
Uh, you touched basically the lows we had yesterday. It was about, about 1940, and we're trading at 1954 right now for that gold contract. So it's interesting it came out. Yeah, talk about bad bets. We'll talk about this one, man. Um, maybe Ackman has, has learned a bit not to, to go all in forever. Uh, but, man, that's quite a loss in three months. $430 million Pershing Square. They had 3.1 million uh, Netflix shares. They sold them all. Uh, they are not in the business of... I guess allowing that company to be losing subscribers, that was probably the transition. I said it was a wake up yesterday, man. Um, Netflix, I mean, look at the volume that Netflix did here for a second. All right, you had Disney paying for their sins, you had Roku paying for their sins as well, okay? But put this thing on a daily, it was bonkers, folks. All right, now they did an extreme amount of volume when they came out last quarter. They guided down, they missed. Uh, the stock dropped from 520 to 379 you still did only 58 million shares yesterday you did 133 million shares you more than doubled what you did the last time they had earnings and that was a mammoth day any other day folks you're doing like four or five million okay well 133 million three of those million were were ackman getting out uh stocks down another three percent today and yeah you have a big valuation problem on this equity folks when you think that they have some great cash flow right now, but how are they going to compete? Are they going to be able to grow? If they can't grow and you got HBO growing, and I talked about it yesterday, and Disney faces this headwind as well, okay, you are always going to be competing. I mean, somebody talked about it in the Tiger's Den saying Apple TV is like four ninety nine dollars a month. You're always going to be competing with Apple TV because Apple's a $2.7 trillion company that can spend however many billions they need just to have that as a facet of their company. Same applies with Amazon almost a multi-trillion dollar company that has Amazon Prime as one facet of a much larger business. Amazon Prime, always gonna be there spending money. Apple, always gonna be there spending money. The stories now are that Amazon's getting into live sports. Apple's probably in the mix as well. How is Netflix gonna compete? Well, maybe they need to spend some money on live sports. Well, if they start spending money on live sports and they're trying to spend money on scripted content, maybe there goes their profit. That's the scary part of the valuation when you think that they may have to re-up the spending again. They had to do that originally, right, to build out their whole production house. They've done that, but now that is facing competition from everybody else because you got Disney, Warner Brothers, Paramount has a new service. You got Peacock, let alone all the streamers that you have out there. Live sports is going to be the next battle, folks. There's nothing like live sports because guess what? You can't watch live sports on delay. You need to be subscribed on that day. That's when people care about it most. That's going to be a battle, and that is going to get some huge contracts because of the value that you have for live sports. You look at the contracts that have been given to podcasters alone, right? Think about the value of a podcaster versus ever getting something like an NFL, Major League Baseball. I mean, Apple TV has Major League Baseball now. Um, I haven't watched it. I'm not a huge baseball fan in general. It's a very slow sport with 160-plus games during a season. And somehow, if you play those 160 games, maybe you make it to the playoff where they have a one-game play-in. Makes zero sense, folks. Uh, Nonetheless, I have not watched it, but it's been met with mixed results, to say the least. But the important part is you have Apple, the most valuable company in the world, paying Major League Baseball for live TV, live sports content. That's going to change the game. Netflix might have a big problem turning a profit if they have to start upping the ante again on what they spend. That's why I like the attractiveness, attractiveness of Disney always having that potential parks and movie theater business. Um, and, you know, the... The brands that Disney has, the, the the movie franchises that they own, folks, Star Wars, Marvel, they own Fox, right? Think about what they own on Fox in terms of under that label, Mickey Mouse, et cetera. Uh, and then you have all those parks. They are in a sweet spot right now, even if streaming takes a little bit of a hit because streaming's around forever, that they're going to be able to benefit from the parks and likes. But, yeah, I would be careful in Netflix, folks, uh, because you are still valued at, I believe, $100 billion. Come on. Where are we at? 97, just under that number now. It was at 110 yesterday when I pulled it up. You were at 150 before their earnings recently, uh, and you were over 300 billion at their highs. $90 billion, you gotta make some money eventually to be a $100 billion company. 
that's the scary part, folks. They have the subscribers, okay? And all those people they say are sharing passwords, just so you know, 100 million people, does not transition to 100 million new subscribers. The reason why they're sharing passwords is because those people probably would not be signing up themselves. If they don't find enough value. Yes, you're going to get some of them, okay? But don't see that number and think that if they crack down, then all those people are coming with. Not necessarily the, the way it's going to go down. All right, we got quite a market, man. S&P's up 50 points. We're at 4,504 right now. We'll jump around to some of the other equities moving today. We have Chairman Powell out there twice today, folks. Twice. I believe he's up at 11 a.m. and maybe 1 or 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we'll see what he has to say. G given a couple speeches out there. Uh, probably no expected headlines, but you never know right now. Markets accelerating higher. We'll take a look at that tenure when we get back as well. Stay tuned, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Jumping back to Tesla shares up 11% right now. We jump back to Netflix shares. The stocks in the press down 3.6% right now. We jump over to Procter & Gamble. They had strong numbers yesterday, right back near the highs right now. You're up 9 tenths percent for Procter & Gamble. Some of those airlines give back some of the gains. American up 7% still, but they pull back a bit. You got United up 11%, holding on to those gains. Delta Airlines down, excuse me, up 4.4%. We covered Boeing. Boeing giving back some of those gains, still up about 2% right now. Uh, and yeah, we jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon shares up about 9 tenths percent. Apple getting a bid at the open. Apple 
up 2% right now. I think Apple's got 16 billion shares outstanding. There's a $32 billion pop for you at the open. Remarkable numbers when you think about it, uh, what's coming out there. And you jump over to Google, up 1.1% right now. We'll finish it off with Microsoft shares to up 2.2. Facebook, look at the pullback Facebook had yesterday, man. You talk about a pullback, the pain does not end. You take a look at the daily. Uh, nothing to say you don't go back down, test those lows of 185 on Facebook. And we got to talk about Twitter. So Twitter, uh, Mr. Elon Musk, he might become with the tender offer. A little bit of an acceleration. I think that's what it uh, had to do. Let me see if I have the headline up here. Do I? I think I saw a pop in terms of where we were. Uh, was that it? No, maybe it was on the front page of CNBC. I, knew, I saw it somewhere. Yeah, there you go. I did. Must to explore potential tender offer. $46.5 billion in committed financing for the deal. That was just out uh, like 15 minutes or so. Uh, yeah, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, nonetheless, Elon, a great promoter of himself, and he is in the headlines on the front page of CNBC yet again. But there's some volatility for you, man. Twitter up half a percent right now, but you just spiked about a buck fifty from where you opened on Twitter shares. It should be an interesting day in the market, to say the least, folks. We get the VIX right now. You're negative by 41 cents. You're trading at 1991, that volatility index. You take a look at the daily. It's kind of the lower portion of where we've been on that VIX right now, pairing some of the gains. We were up April 12th, just nine days ago at 25.38, let alone the high 30s that we had when the market was really selling off. Remarkable resurgence in this market at 45.04. And I said we'd look at the 10 year to wrap up the program. Talking about lower prices, folks. You're down 15 ticks. There's your 15 minute action. You're at lows of the session almost in the 10 year. Yields rising yet again. Stay tuned, folks. <clears throat> we got a replay this hour. Basil's out today. But we got our man Larry live at 11 o'clock. Live program all day at TFNN, folks. Have a great